are these people? I mentioned earlier, an INN co-founder that many of you may not know is, is a guy by the name of The Dissident. He's on Twitter by the name by uh, leftist underscore news 12, which is as generic as it gets. Um, he was hanging out with us in the discords when we formed INN and he was publishing and he has his own Substack called the 307.substack.com. And mm. we were all kind of friends. And when we signed up, when we were starting INN, the whole idea was we wanted to have journalists who wrote exclusive articles which then we would be able to cover on our shows and we would have unique content that nobody else was really talking about. And in that spirit, like I said earlier, the dissident was very active between November, 2021, when we first formed and August of 2022, he actually had written the article that has the most views on INN stack ever which is an article about Hassan Piker that was published just around or before the general Ugh. strike summit in 2021. Well, talking about how he shits on actual activists and how he's a, he's a Gucci socialist effectively, but months, you know, a long, cares. A, a long time before and you, know, you guys had covered Chris Smalls being a Gucci socialist, but, um, Greece. he also had written Greece. about, <laughs> He also had Hello, written. Please? Come on, Trees. What are you doing, please? So he also had written about Russia and Ukraine, and after about six months of seeing all the propaganda, he'd written about Bellingcat a couple times. I think we'd written, we'd cover a couple of his Bellingcat articles, exposing them. Um, he decided that he just didn't have a taste for it anymore, and hung it up and said, "I'm I'm gonna go do some other shit. I'll see you guys." Like, all right. And, Safety is number one priority. Yes, and I stay in touch, and every once in a while, I'll be like, "Hey, so you're, you think about writing? We're we're around. We're still doing. You know, just hey, network's still here. How you doing? Uh, just that's what I do. I stay in touch with people. And sure enough, this week he says Julian Assange being freed got me out of my funk, and I'm here to. And I got some things to say again. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's do it. So his first piece was writing about Julian being freed. And I also wrote a piece. I think a lot of people have covered Julian being freed already this, this week. So I'm not just going to cover the yeah. street, the straight dope about that. There's plenty of places to go. And most there people already heard it. So the other piece that the dissident wrote was what pissed him off was that in Canada, the globe and mail is one of the papers of record there and that there are six lies he caught in a hit piece that they had done on Julian Assange. And this is the bullet mm -hmm. points that are published at the end of the article we're going to read, but I figured we'd start with the bullet points, which is that Julian Assange never called himself a whistleblower and has always referred to himself as a publisher and a journalist, of course. All right. That WikiLeaks published the full version of the collateral murder in video in 2010, along with short version, there wasn't only a short version published. There is no evidence that Roger Stone had any connection directly or indirectly with WikiLeaks during the 2016 election, because this person is clearly believing what was in the Steele dossier. <clears throat> that the DNC and Podesta emails contained impactful stories that led to resignations at the DNC and CNN. Clearly they did, because... Debbie Wasserman Schultz ended up resigning as the head of the DNC. If I remember correctly. Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Assange has denied his source for the DNC emails was Russia, because we all kind of know that it was Seth Rich, even though he can't admit it, and his family doesn't really want that to be. And Roger Stone was convicted of was convicted of obstruction of congressional investigation, making false statements to Congress and witness tampering, not for any connection to WikiLeaks during the 2016 election. So he wants to start mm. by making these clarifications. And again, the dissident at the 307.substack.com published this article this, the other day that the Globe and Mail Coming ran... to a Substack newsletter near you. Yeah, this is where all the best journalists are, from Laura Kay 
over at Normal Island News to to a guy named Indy over at Indy Media Today and Ricky over at Council of State Media and Kit Clarenberg and 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 and, and yeah. Um, I'm guessing it's going to be Rachel coming to a Substack near you soon. I've been predicting that for a while. Hell, mm -hmm. Betty Hassan already did. But what he says is, again, that the Globe and Mail runs an error-filled smear piece on Julian. Canada's paper of record ran a smear piece filled with factual errors and debunked Brushgate conspiracy theories. So we know well, where they stand. Looks like we got ourselves a reader. So we've got, you know, we, we know where Canada stands. That the Canadian newspaper, the Globe and Mail, recently ran a giant smear piece on Julian Assange entitled Julian Assange was never a journalist or whistleblower, but their right to free him written by journalist Doug Saunders. The piece was not only a gross mm. attack on a journalist who's exposed war crimes and corruption around the world, but was filled with major factual errors and journalistic malpractice, which is funny considering that he's writing it about WikiLeaks who's never gotten a story wrong or had to print a retraction. Though they did make a deal to pull the DNC emails off as part of the plea deal, and I will concede that. Not her damn emails. I'm tired of talking about your damn emails. Well, we shouldn't have stopped talking about her damn emails. Ugh. Right? Yeah. Below is a list of the My false man. claims, right? So here's the false claim one. Julian calls himself a whistleblower. Saunders starts the article by saying that Julian is a fraud who called himself a journalist and a whistleblower while greatly hindering and inconveniencing the cause of journalism and making life much harder for actual whistleblowers, unquote. The first error here is the claim that Assange calls himself a whistleblower. Assange has made clear that he is a publisher and a journalist and not a whistleblower. The Reporters Without Borders article, RSF, dispels common misconceptions in the case against Julian Assange responds to the claim that Julian Assange is a whistleblower by saying, quote, Assange played a different role to that of a whistleblower. He did not leak classified information himself, but he published information that was leaked to him. Pretty simple and pretty pathetic that the Globe and Mail couldn't get that right. False claim number two was that the collateral mur murder video put out by WikiLeaks was deceptively edited. In the article, Saunders writes, quote, WikiLeaks first came to public to mass public attention in the spring of 2010 when it published what it claimed to be an exclusive leak of a U.S. military video of a 2007 incident in which helicopters opened fire on a number of people, including civilians in Baghdad. The video entitled, uh, the video, he says, edited to remove much of its context, bullshit, was posted on a, on a WikiLeaks site called Collateral Murder, and promoted as a world exclusive, unquote. A basic Google search for the collateral murder video on WikiLeaks debunks this claim, as the page shows the 17-minute short version of the collateral murder video with the full unedited 39-minute video published right below it. Right? Yep. Both videos have been available since on WikiLeaks since they published the story as corroborated by a 2010 New York Times article that states, quote, WikiLeaks made public a 38-minute video of the helicopter attack as well as a 17-minute edited version that it called collateral murder. More smears from corporate media. Next, false claim number three was that WikiLeaks corroborated with the Trump campaign about the 2016 DNC leaks. And we still hear this one a lot. In the article, Saunders writes and regurgitates the propaganda that the Mueller investigation into the Russian interference found that the GRU had provided the hacked emails to WikiLeaks, which then communicated with Donald Trump's campaign and made them aware of the hacks, often in advance of their release. Unquote. While it is true that the Mueller report accuses Assange of getting the DNC emails from Russia's subsequent reporting, has raised from Russia, comma, it should be a comma there, subsequent reporting has raised serious questions around this narrative. Journalist Aaron Mate 
reported the holes in the timeline of the Mueller Ru report. Russian scum! Of the Mueller report accusations in a real clear investigations uh, um, piece. In the article, Mate points out that the Mueller report used WikiLeaks, accused WikiLeaks of receiving the DNC emails from the alleged GRU run accounts, DC leaks, and Guccifer 2.0. The problem with this narrative... They said Aaron Mate yelled at me. Oh, Aaron Mate. So oh, Aaron I'm Mate. All... Yes, that guy. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! The problem with this narrative is that the Mueller report alleges that Assange's first contact with this accounts, with these accounts, took place on June 14th, but Assange had already noticed he had it, announced that he had information on the DNC on June 12th. As, of course, Mate put in the article, if Assange's first contact with DC leaks came on June 14th and with Gucci for 2.0 on June 22nd, then what was Assange talking about on June 12th? Is it possible that Assange heard from another supposed Russian source before then? Maybe, mm -hmm. but if so, Mueller doesn't know it. Instead, the report offers the implausible scenario that their first contact came after Assange's announcement. So basically, he announced it, bluffing, hoping that he might get it. Yeah, that does not sound very plausible. Furthermore, no. a 2017 testimony from CrowdStrike CEO Sean Henry called into question the claim that Russia even hacked the DNC. As the aforementioned Aaron Mate reported in a separate Real Clear Investigations article, Sean Henry, the CEO of CrowdStrike, the cybersecurity firm that first accused Russia of stealing the DNC emails admitted that they have no concrete evidence that it even happened. I'm going to repeat that line because that sounds vaguely important. Mm -hmm. CrowdStrike, the cybersecurity firm that first accused Russia of stealing the DNC emails, admitted that they have no concrete evidence that it even happened. We just made the whole thing up. Yep. Saunders claimed that WikiLeaks, quote, communicated with Donald Trump's campaign and made them aware of the hacks, often in advance of their release, is likely referring to the theory that Roger Stone was communicating with or had a back channel with WikiLeaks during the 2016 election. This claim is probably... Let me call the Russians to help. Yeah, I don't think so. This claim is provably false. The only proven communication between Stone and WikiLeaks during the 2016 election consists of WikiLeaks telling Stone to stop making false claims of association. We appreciate that, however. The false claims of association are being used by the Democrats to undermine the impact of our publications. Don't go there if you don't want us to correct you. And of course, Roger Stone is a douchebag and says, the more you correct me, the more people think you're lying. Your operation leaks like a sieve. You need to figure out who your friends are. And then after the election, happy, we are more now more free to communicate. Okay. Ugh. While Stone attempted to establish a connection to WikiLeaks through the liberal comedian Randy Credico, and the conservative conspiracy theorist Jerome Corsi, there is no evidence that either of them had any contact with WikiLeaks or Assange during the 2016 election. For Credico, his only contact with Assange was a public interview with Assange on his radio show on October 25th of 2016. They did not speak again until April 11th of 2017. In the case of Jerome Corsi, the Washington Post article, quote, inside the special counsel's long hunt to uncover whether the Trump campaign conspired with Russia, what a title, reported that despite extensive investigation into it, the Mueller investigation could find no contact between Corsi and WikiLeaks or Assange. Number so, one Russian secretary. Right? So, again, nothing... No direct connections, and they couldn't. And now, I know that they were also refused all kinds of stuff that they tried to subpoena and get their hands on, 
to try to see and get the complete picture, and they weren't provided the complete picture because they weren't entitled to it. They got what they could get. Legally. False claim number four was that the yeah. DNC emails contain nothing incriminating. The nothing burger. In the article, Saunders, Doug Saunders of the Globe and Mail, as we were saying, uh, this smear this smear artist, this propagandist, this Russiagator, writes that, quote, the emails contain nothing incriminating or even especially embarrassing about the Democrats, unquote. This claim is just baffling. Because Putin's a madman. Bye, Jamal. Peace out, bro. I don't know what you're going to be doing <laughs> next. Maybe he'll get a job on TYT. Maybe, yep. maybe Cenk Uger will hire him for a for an angry man show. Maybe. Maybe he'll need someone to pull the fire alarm. The BBC yep. article, 18 revelation, revelations from WikiLeaks hacked Clinton emails, lists multiple scandals revealed through emails, including Clinton saying she would secretly intervene in Syria, saying she's had private and public positions, that Clinton was fed a CNN debate question ahead of time by Donna Brazil, and expressing support for open trade and open borders. The Wrap article, Seven Most Shocking Revelations ha in Hacked DNC Emails Released by WikiLeaks, lists some of the big scandals revealed by the DNC emails. The emails revealed that the DNC was secretly plotting against Bernie Sanders, despite pretending to be neutral publicly. This includes pitching stories about the Sanders campaign being an unorganized mess, attempting to use Sanders' religious beliefs to turn voters against him, and reducing polling locations in pro-Sanders areas, among other things. Pokemon go to the polls. These scandals were so impactful that they caused Debbie Wasserman Schultz to resign from her position as DNC chairwoman, and they caused CNN to cut ties with Donna Brazil, who I mentioned earlier. But no, they had nothing especially embarrassing or incriminating. I mean, those Podesta emails were brutal. False claim five yep. is that Assange said that his source for the DNC was probably Russian. We know this is by far the worst part of the article and one of the worst cases of journalistic malpractice I've ever seen, again, from the dissident. In the article, Saunders claims, though he later denied it, Mr. Assange said at the time that he believed the leaks were probably coming to him from Moscow. On the online version of the Globe and Mail, this passage links to an article on The Hill titled Assange, Some Leaks May Have Been Russian, and the article states, quote, on Sean Hannity's radio show, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange said that hacked Democratic documents sent to reporters at Gawker and The Hill may have come from Russia, but he said he is confident the emails he received did not come from the same source. Unquote. Quoth Julian Nevermore. This is clearly concerning. Oh, the Raven. Well, <laughs> one or the other. Six of one, right? I'm confused. Yeah, same thing. This is clearly concerning as Saunders is claiming Assange admitted the leaks he was receiving were coming from Russia by linking to an article that quotes Assange fully rejecting the idea that his source was connected to Russia. Russia. Because he knows nobody's going to click the link. Yep. Well, while up until this point, the article has been filled with factual errors, this is by far the most egregious. Saunders is attributing a fake quote to Assange while linking to an article that quotes him correctly saying the exact opposite of what Saunders claimed he said. The only plausible explanations yep. for this major error are that the Globe and Mail do not fact check articles before publishing and or they are okay with publishing articles that contain blatant lies and misrepresentation. This is a good writer and he does his Who homework. Wrote this? Who wrote this lie? <laughs> and then finally, of course, the false claim about Roger Stone going to prison for his connection to WikiLeaks, which we know does not is not the reason. In the article, again, propagandist Moron Saunders claims, in the end, quote, Mr. Trump's agent, Roger Stone, went to prison for using WikiLeaks to interfere with the election, unquote. This is like saying that Assange was in jail because of the 2016 DNC emails. 
It's dumb and mm -hmm. uninformed and shows how fucking stupid you are and not everybody else. Nowhere does the conviction mention anything to do with a connection between Stone and WikiLeaks during the 2016 election. This claim is also evidence-free as shown above. Okay, that from the U.S. Attorney's Office official press release, right, is that, that U.S. Attorney's Office, Stone was found guilty of obstruction on a congressional investigation, meaning he wouldn't turn over his phone and stuff to be surveilled illegally. Five counts of making false statements to Congress and tampering with a witness, but nothing to do with corroborating with WikiLeaks. The Globe and Mail has written multiple articles concerned about misinformation and disinformation. If they are seriously concerned with misinformation, they would issue the following corrections to this article. And that's what I showed earlier. So, I definitely would recommend The Dissident. Because he's an INN founding member. So, everyone give him a, a, a subscription. Everyone go follow him over at Twitter, at leftist underscore news 12. And that's what his thing looks like, which is more confusing because it says leftists news with an S, but his handle is leftist without an S underscore news 12, which I don't know why 12, mm -hmm. but okay, good for you, man. Um, 30, 330. 330. The 307, the 307.substack.com. Is their sub stack. So go check them out. Did you do? Did you do? Oh, God. <laughs> Report independent media like the 307 and INN. You can do that over on Cash App. You can do that on Patreon. You can do that on PayPal. You can do that on Rumble. We prefer you do it on Cash App because that puts cash in our hands right away. There's that QR code that you see up on screen during the, during the, the show, too. You can use that to scan and that will go to our PayPal or to our Ko fi. And you can buy us a cup of coffee for five bucks. And uh, and that also goes Money, into the, the Jesse PC fund. Correct. Thank you. 